Laura Dillon and I'm the education curator here at the Salisbury Zoo. We appreciate you joining in with us to catch up with the zoo crew. Today we're going to talk a little bit about our volunteer opportunities that we provide here at the zoo. We have a variety of things that folks can do, whether it's an individual or a group or a school class. Um, some of the things that we do are service learning projects and we provide an opportunity for folks to come out usually about once a month sometimes more if projects are needed here around the zoo. We have a distribution list and we send out all the information uh, telling you what you need to do, what times, how dirty you might get so that you're prepared for when you're coming out, what you're going to be working on. And all you need to do to get involved in that is to go to our website, salisburyzoo.org. Under the education tab, you'll find a volunteer link and it's um, a little link right there that says email us and you just tell us you want to be put on that list. And then as projects come out, we send them. And then if it works for your calendar, you shoot us an email back that says, hey, I'll be there. And if you can't, you can just delete it and don't have to worry about it. We have a great many projects that come available. It assists a lot of folks that are working on community hours for organizations that they're involved with, as well as our high school students that need those credits to graduate. So we would love to have you join in with those projects if you're interested. Some of our other things that we do are our docent program. Our docents are a vital part of our education department and in turn a huge part of helping us educate folks here in the zoo as well as off-site. Our docent program is for um, children ages 16 and up and we offer two times a year that we do training. We're actually in the middle of our spring training and um, have a few people that are going through that. Our docents are volunteer educators. So they go around in the zoo educating folks in an informal education opportunity. We have discovery boxes that they do. Um, we have roving opportunities. So they're out and about on grounds. You can easily identify them with their bright green docent shirts. And um, during the training, we teach them everything that they need to know. You don't have to have any prior experience to come in and be a docent. We come through and we give you hands-on experience with all of those um, opportunities that you would be doing as a, as we call them, seasoned docent. Um, we give you opportunities to go out and shadow with our seasoned docents so that you get hands-on experience not only with the product that you're working with but also actually seeing it firsthand as our seasoned docents are demonstrating the um, techniques that we want used and the information that we want given to the guests. So we would love to have folks join us. Um, since our spring one is already in season right now, you would be able to join us for our next uh, training opportunity, which is in September. And what we do is we meet from six to eight each Wednesday in September and um, have two hours of training here on grounds. Our keepers are phenomenal in giving us a little tour each night so that you get to know about the exhibit animals as well as the education collection. Um, and then there's a little bit of homework that's involved so that we know that you are doing a little research and of course we provide all the information that you need for that. But we would love to have you come out. Uh, Meg's going to tell us about our teen program that's kicking off this summer and can give lots of great details there. We're really excited about this opportunity for our teen group to come out and get involved with us. Thank you, Leonora. My name is Meg Tyndall. I am an AmeriCorps member at the Salisbury Zoo. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about our new teen docent program. In the past, in our docent program, um, we did allow teens to be accompanied by an adult um, in the training. However, now um, we're introducing a new program this year where teens um, can work their way into becoming docents by starting in the summer program. The program will run from mid-June through to mid-August, and it will give teens the opportunity to do some conservation work around the zoo and around the community, and also get to know a little bit more about the zoo and um, create some different programming around here um, that will benefit the community. Um, it'll be a great way for teens if they're interested in conservation, in environmental education, or um, going into in any sort of environmental work. Um, so we'll provide a lot of different guest speakers and opportunities um, for them to learn more about that. In order to be considered for this program, you do have to fill out an application, which can be found on our website, um, salisburyzoo.org. And under the volunteer, it should be under the volunteer tab. So if you fill out the application, it's all online. It'll be sent in to us. Um, from there, you'll just have to attend an open house. The dates are on there too. And applications are due before April 15th. 
Um, after that, we'll just have an interview process and we'll pick about 15 teens to join the program. So we're very excited about that. So hopefully we'll get some applications in. So thank you and back to you, Leonora. So next we're going to talk to Miss Bridget Foster. She's one of our seasoned docents. She's been working with us for quite some time now. She's going to give us some information on what she enjoys doing as a docent and experiencing all the fun stuff with the discovery boxes that she's able to do out with the public. So off to Miss Bridget. Thanks, Leonora. My name is Bridget Foster and I'm a docent here at the Salisbury Zoo. And one of my favorite things to do is take out a discovery cart, set it up by the river, and talk to visitors as they come through the zoo. Um, a discovery cart is just what it sounds like. It's full of wonderful discoveries inside. Um, there's things about animals, their habitat, um, how we can conserve their habitat, and it's also full of biofacts and interactive exhibits and games that the children can play. And Birds of Prey is my favorite discovery card to take out. And the game that we play is you have birds here. We have the red-tailed hawk, the eagle, the turkey vulture, and the great horned owl. And we talk about their features and their food, their nests, and human impact. And we will ask the children different questions about the bird, and they will pick up a card and lay it on what they think is, is the proper space. And this way they learn about the animals. And the bottom category is human impact. And actually, they can take any of the cards and lay them on any of these squares, and they all would be right because there are a lot of things that we do as humans that hurt our animals and our environment. Now back to you, Leonora. All right, thank you, Bridget, we appreciate that. Next, we're gonna have Miss Carol Dole. She's one of our brand new docents. She's actually in our training program right now. She's gonna tell you why it was that she got um, interested in becoming a docent and some of the things that she's hoping to accomplish while she's here. So off to Miss Carol. Thank you, Louis Leonora. Hi, I'm Carol Dale, and I am currently, um, I am in the current uh, docent program that's, uh, that's going on right now, um, which I like to call zoo school. I absolutely love it. Um, this, uh, I was inspired by my grandchildren, actually, who are very big animal lovers. Um, Ella and Eva, Ella has always wanted since the time she was very young to be um, involved in animals and hopefully a, a veterinarian or whatever direction she likes and uh, what better than to be able to have inspired your grandchildren in some way. Um, I've been a nurse all my life taking care of people and now I'm retired and want to do some volunteer work and um, it's time for the little furry creatures to um, lighten my life. So. Um, I'm excited, I'm looking forward to it, and I've loved every minute of it so far. Um, but I'll briefly introduce you to my friend over here, and this is Harley. Hi, Harley, can you say hello to the camera? Pretty bird? You don't wanna talk, Harley? Over here is um, Hogan, our little parrot. And he's very talkative. Hi there. What? Harley seems to be a little camera shy, because generally he's got quite a set of lungs. Harley. Anyway, thank you very much. And back to you, Leonora, because I'm not going to get Harley to speak to me. All right, so one of our upcoming activities that we would love to have families come out for is our Wild About Reading event, taking place on April 6th from 6 to 7.30. It's a, an event that's based on animal theme. Of course, here at the zoo, we have to have animals in the theme, and it is on any and every kind of literary activity that you can think of. We have a variety of partners from the community that are joining us, so that there'll be stations set up for early childhood education age children, all the way through elementary school and into lower middle school. Uh, there'll be stations set up all across the lawn, and families can come through visiting the stations as they wish, participating in a variety of activities, and um, getting information about what those organizations offer that can assist you, one, in making sure that your child doesn't fall into the 
lack of reading slump that sometimes happens over the summer, as well as if you need special activities or particular services. We have a variety of folks that are going to be here that can tell you what they can do to help you with your children. We'd love to have you come out. You can register on the website. We appreciate registrations in advance so that we know how many folks to expect. And um, it's a completely free event. There's no charge. You come in, every child leaves with at least two different books. So it's a great opportunity to come out, collect some books for your bookshelf, as well as find out some fun activities that you can do. On April the 8th, we will have our spring cleanup. Great chance to come out and be a service learning volunteer. We will be doing some spring tidying here around the zoo, mulching our flower beds, getting rid of some of this winter yuck that's been hanging around. Hopefully it'll be warm enough for us and we will feel like spring is coming in. Um, in order to participate in the spring cleanup, you just need to go to that link for service learning and say, hey, I want to be there, and we will add you to the list. So we'd love to have you come out and do that. April 22nd is Earth Day, and we will do a huge celebration with a variety of coordinated groups and organizations that come in and give information about the con conservation messages that they're putting out. So look for information on that, and we hope to see you in April. So as you can see, we're over in one of our holding areas with our prehensile-tailed porcupine, Churro. He is working on showing off some of his ability to hang upside down and use that really strong tail and his back legs. Um, Prehensile-tailed porcupines are known for their great tails. You can see he's wrapped himself around here. He uses it like an extra hand so he can hang on. You can also see his fabulous quills. On the end of each of those quills, there are tiny microscopic barbs, approximately 100 per quill. So um, they definitely grip a hold when they go into the skin. Um, he uses it as a great defense technique. The spines are actually, his quills, are actually um, modified hairs. So his entire body is covered with them. On his belly, he has small hairs that are um, softer so it doesn't poke him. Can you come down, target for me? Good job, come on, can you target here? Let me see if I can get him to move over for us so you can get a better shot of seeing some more of him, target. Good job, buddy. Um, we've been doing a lot of training with him so that we can show the public how he uses his fabulous claws and on um, that tail to move around. They predominantly stay in the trees. Um, coming down on the ground makes them vulnerable. So they use the trees and those fabulous tail, uh, nails and tail um, to move around and manipulate himself. Prehensile tail porcupines are known for their adorable marshmallow type nose. It's a really squishy little nose and um, he doesn't mind us touching it and so we usually take advantage of that. Um, you know, they are very, um, very um, quiet animals. They do make some sounds, sometimes target. Sometimes um, we'll get grunts or um, little um, noises from him uh, when he's excited over something um, or when he feels like he's threatened. If we're moving around in his space and he's had enough of us um, at being there, he will very quickly uh, do a huffy breath at us, as I call it. He does a <sighs> kind of huff. Um, which is basically telling us back off he's had enough. Um, he gives us lots of warning before he's, he does anything that would be drastic that we would have to worry about. But we're really excited about having him in the collection and being able to take him out and explain to people how he works with his, with his prehensile tail. Um, he is a nocturnal animal, so we're working on helping him to realize that he does need to stay awake more during the day and uh, show folks what he can do for our programs. So hopefully you'll be able to visit with us and see him out on grounds um, in our caging on the lawn. He's able to come out there and um, do some enrichment and some training. Uh, you can see using those fabulously strong rear legs to hold himself up here. Um, he has great teeth that he constantly chews with. So we give him a variety of things to um, to gnaw on to help him to file those teeth down. Um, and he's trying to be really adventurous and come out and see you guys up close and personal. Um, so trying to keep him busy here. So hopefully you'll be able to come out and see Chiro um, exhibiting some of his fabulous gymnastic qualities. 
And we thank you guys for joining us here at Catching Up with the Zoo Crew on Pack 14. We hope to see you soon.